Hey, welcome to my channel. Check this out. This is a DJI Spark. This is a DJI Mavic Pro. And this is a Phantom 4 Pro. So if you own one of those DJI drones, then what is the best phone to use with it? Is it this one? Perhaps it's this one. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you which one is the best. Stay tuned. Okay, one really cool thing to note about this video is that we are the 17th of September, the year 2017. So any phone that you buy in the future, if you're watching this video in the year 2018 or 2019, then the specs for those phones should be higher than the specs I'm gonna show you today. So when it comes to cell phones, you're in one of two camps. Either you're in the iOS camp, which is Apple, and then there's everybody else. So as of today, which is 17 September, the year 2017, the best phone that you could buy on iOS, which is made by Apple, would obviously be the iPhone 10, or as a lot of people are gonna call it, the iPhone X. Why do I say that? Well, I'll get into that a little bit later. And also, as of today, if you're an Android user, well then, the best phone you could buy for a DJI product is obviously the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So the first point to consider would be phone size. You see these controllers? One's the Mavic and one's the Spark. Well, you have to fit a phone in these controllers. And if you get a phone that is a way massively too big, then, and it doesn't fit, especially with a case, then you're gonna have to buy some additional device to use it. But it's better to get a phone that fits these controllers. So here we have the controller for the Spark, and here we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And it actually fits in this controller nicely. Now, I'm gonna show you something that's pretty cool. I'm gonna leave the case on it. This is a case I picked up, and it's by this company right here. So it's actually a nice rubberized case that's on the phone. I'm gonna stick this phone inside this controller. And here's what it looks like. So there it is. There's the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 within the Spark controller. And for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna put the phone inside the Mavic Pro controller. There we go, it's in the Mavic Pro controller. It fits nicely. That's right, size matters. So when you buy a cell phone, you wanna get the cell phone with the biggest screen display and the smallest bezels. So when you look at phones from Apple, like the iPhone 7 Plus or the 8 Plus, the bezels are massive. But when you look at the new Apple iPhone 10, you get a lot of screen and very little bezel. And as well, if you look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, you get a massive amount of screen and very little bezel. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 has a 6.3 inch display. The new iPhone 10 coming out actually has a 5.8 inch display, which is also pretty good because you have very little bezel and you have a good size screen. So screen technology and pixels per inch. Well, this is the year 2017. We're in the month of September. So for the last five years, the screen technology has been OLED. It's a little more pricey to put into a phone, so a lot of manufacturers may not use it, and that's probably why Apple hasn't used it in the past. With the release of the iPhone 10, Apple is finally using OLED screen technology. So what does that do for you? Well, it means that when you're out in bright light, bright sunlight, and you crank up the brightness full, you're not gonna lose any vibrancy on the colors. They're gonna look amazing. Now, the next thing you have to look at is pixels per inch. The more pixels per inch you have on an OLED phone, the more amazing it looks. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 has a PPI of 521, and the new iPhone 10 coming out has a PPI of 458, which isn't too bad for its size. The most important factor with any cell phone is screen brightness. So you wanna get the cell phone that has the brightest screen in the sun. And the way manufacturers refer to that is nit. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 has 1,200 nit. Now, when you go with the Apple iPhone 10, uh, the nit rating is much lower. The nit rating for an iPhone 10 is 625, which isn't bad. When you're out in the bright light, it will still be okay. And just to show you screen brightness, this is the maximum brightness on the Galaxy uh, Note 8. It's at 1,200 nits. And if I bring over, the Phantom 4 Pro controller, that is at 1000 nits. So let me just try to see if I can get both of them in the screen here, it's kind of hard. You can see the Samsung Galaxy is a very large phone, so you have a bigger display. So there we go, at 1200 nits for the Samsung and 1000 nits for the Phantom 4 Pro integrated controller, you're not gonna see much difference, but they both would be extremely bright outdoors. 
Dust and water resistance. Yes, you want a phone that is dust and water resistant. Well, manufacturers identify the dust and the water resistance of a cell phone just by putting something called an IP rating. So if you see something like an IP67, IP68, what exactly does that mean? So here we go. The first number of six means that is the highest rating for dust resistance. If something had an IP rating of five, it means it's not as good with dust and dirt and all that great stuff. And then the second number is your water resistance. So the higher that number is, the better. So if you get a cell phone, like most Apple phones are IP67, so it means they're really good with dust and they're okay with water. An IP rating of 67 is gonna do well outside in a light rain, no matter what. Maybe even a heavy rain, but you don't wanna keep it out too long. The Samsung phones are usually rated at an IP68, which is a little bit better. So the Galaxy Note 8 is an IP68, which means that it can handle a little bit more water, a little bit more pressure than the iPhone 10 can. And the last one I'll touch on is battery capacity. When you get a cell phone, just make sure it's got a lot of battery capacity. You'll know that. If you have a phone that lasts you the entire day for when you're scrolling around on social media, doing what you have to do, send emails, check the web, and it lasts an entire day, then that's perfect for flying a DJI product because that means it's gonna last maybe about four or five batteries worth of a DJI drone. All right, so those are the two phones, in my opinion, right now in September 2017 that I believe for DJI products would give you the best bang for the buck. You're gonna get an awesome experience with these two phones. Let's just review quickly the specs. I'm gonna throw up a little slide, have a quick look. And as we move on into the future, just compare phones with those specs and just see if new phones have specs that are similar or much better. If they're better, well, then of course, it's gonna be a great experience while you're flying around. So I didn't touch on the processor in the phones, the RAM in the phones, the camera, etc., and all the features. Those are the benefits. Obviously, if you're gonna buy yourself a phone, you're gonna buy a phone for those features, right? But you probably never consider, I'm gonna buy a phone and oh yeah, I'm gonna fly DJI drones. No, but if you are thinking of a phone now and you are a person who flies DJI drones and you do use your phone to fly, then you might wanna start thinking about, hmm, I better make sure the display is really good outdoors so I get the best display there is right now on the market. So it is the year 2017, and if you're an Android user, you've got an awful lot of selection for phones out there, and there's some really good ones on the market right now. Now, I have not personally tried them all. I've only tried a few, so I'm not gonna recommend any other than the one I recommended here in this video, which was the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, but I'm gonna show them all to you right now. And you'll see for the most part, most of them have a great display, very small bezel, and very modern technology, and each phone has a ton of features, but you'll have to look at that yourself. So here we go. Let's see all the Android phones for 2017 with great displays for DJI Go products. Now, if you're an Apple user, and uh, if you look over here, you can see I am an Apple user, then you have a smaller selection. So let me just show you all the phones that are great for DJI products, that are great outdoors, have a great display, small bezel, everything. Here we go. That's right, there's only one, the Apple iPhone X. Oh yeah, and one final thing that I should mention is it doesn't matter what phone you have. You could have the most powerful phone in the world, uh, like the Galaxy Note 8 is probably one of the most powerful phones out on the market now. You could have that phone, but if DJI hires a bunch of really sloppy monkeys to program the DJI Go 4 app on the Android system, well then it doesn't matter how good your phone is because you're gonna have a crappy experience. And the same is true on iOS. If they make a crappy iOS, version it doesn't matter how good your iphone is you're gonna have a crappy crappy experience so all that to say is hey it's great to have a phone but we can't control the software version of the dji go 4 app which means that we're at the mercy of dji and their software developers to give us a perfect experience so with all that said i wish you well if there's some phones that you'd like to recommend that you find are awesome for using with dji products because the screen is great out in the sun that's a nice big display, the colors they render well, the phone is responsive, works well with the DJI Go 4 app, then by all means, post them below so that everybody else can see. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any comments at all, you didn't like what I was saying, or you loved what I was saying, or you wanna to add to what I was saying, by all means, post them below. I love reading comments, and so does everybody else. So keep the conversation going, and until the next video, we'll see you then.